Right, we'll get underway. Um, I've had apologies from um, some councillors, uh, some not so well, and others who aren't here today, so I don't think we need to record those. So, um, would you like to fire away on the natural hazards chapter? is all of the workshops that we have concluded to date. And that was yesterday's one, the 27th. Unfortunately, you'll see there's a, a, a date mistake. Today is Wednesday the 28th, not the 29th. We're doing the natural hazards chapter. And just bringing back to you a little bit of information that was requested yesterday on the transport chapter. And of course, there is tomorrow's um, agenda. Uh, you should all have your natural hazards chapter and natural hazards section 32 in front of you. That's what we're discussing today. And of course that's what we're doing. So um, I have with me Janice Carter, Senior Planner, and Helen Beaumont, um, who you will be familiar with from various flooding issues. Um, we'll start with the flooding natural hazards and then we'll move on to the Port Hill natural hazards. And this is um, revisions going over um, what came out of the previous workshop with you. So I'll just move forward to your photo. Right, there you okay. go. Uh, at the previous um, 6th of May meeting, we looked at um, the flood management areas and explained how they had increased from the operative city plan. And we also debated the issue of modelling, whether it should incorporate a 0.5 metre or a 1 metre sea level rise. Um, allowance within that modelling. Um, so since that meeting we have um, since that meeting we have um, updated the planning maps which you have in front of you which is the, the black binder um, to show the one metre sea level rise on those planning maps and they have been in, in, incorporated the one metre sea level rise and there's also in front of you some A3 flood maps, which look a bit like this, which you saw last time. And that is an updated um, overall map of the city and the aerial extent of the flood management areas. Um, so is that updated to one metre? One, updated to one metre, yes. Sea level rise. Not to, to my knowledge, there still isn't a national um, direction to do one metre. Um. Um, just, just for your information, in the planning maps now, we will have the standard planning maps which show zoning, all other notation and the natural hazards, but we're also having a series that just shows the natural hazards so you can see them quite clearly so that it's not too complex when you look on the planning maps. So there will be... Exactly the same information, but some uh, another series of maps that shows just the natural hazards as well. Okay. So, will these? Sorry, three, Madam Chair. Will will these be available online? So we in, can make them available online. So in a Google Maps type sense, so that you can drive into them or drive down into them or. This, that wasn't generally the expectation that this map itself would go into the district plan, but we can make it available in some way. I'm not sure okay. whether it can be a Google map or okay. not. Right. It doesn't matter what sort. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. The other... Um, oh, sorry. I was just going to ask on that, because I guess um, as, lay, as lay people, I find the, flood, the flooding maps, um, for example, that are online, it's difficult to understand. Now, I don't know if there's any way of simplifying them or up, um, I'm just really giving you some feedback about, um, I guess, especially, yeah. So it might be that with some learnt training we can get our heads around them, but I'm just thinking too for the for the general public, they're pretty, I, I think they're probably pretty difficult to actually find the information that people want I, to. I would agree with you, which is why we're having two series of maps. Your standard planning maps, which has everything on them, including the zoning, etc. But then the second series of maps, which simply shows the natural hazards, because they are quite um, complicated, particularly in some areas like the Port Hills, where there might be two or three various hazards showing. This is what Janice is 
um, handed out to you today is the Natural Hazards series of maps. What, what's the impact of having the residential red zone shown in the maps? Will they be in the actual plan? Uh, in the second phase, uh, right. So they there won't, will be some planning they for They won't those. be printed in the first phase. Uh, currently in this first phase, it, it just, they're, they're uh, red and, they're, and they show as Sarah red zonings. Um, they're not given any kind of land use zoning or anything like that because we haven't done that work yet. But what the map does show, as opposed to last time when we came to you, the red zone sort of blocked out the flood management areas because it was an overlay. Yeah. This time we've shown the flood management area showing through the red zone should things happen in the future. But it's not a zone. And, uh, you know, no, the it's thing, not. That's right. The thing that bothers me about that is that it, um, it just adds to the... Um, to, to, to the misunderstanding that this is a legal zone, and it's not. It no, is simply a um, method that has been adopted by central government to um, provide the basis for an area where they will make a voluntary offer. Yep. We are now in a situation where we're, we're going to have to look at those zones in terms of the, um, our stormwater and our, you know, all the various uses that we yep. want to make of that before there can be a public... Consultation, and I just, I'm really worried about us having anything in our formal documentation that gives it any form of status. And it, and in a way, when it was covered by the, by the flood um, management area, it was actually quite beneficial because it does, it all fits within the flood management area. There isn't a single part of the residential red zone flatland that doesn't fit within there. You're, you're absolutely correct. Um, perhaps I could uh, just show you to the second page on these um, planning maps that we've just handed out, which shows the legend. Um, it may be that we need to come up with a better name for it, but it's, there's, there's two types of notation on these maps. And you'll see that the Sierra Residential Red Zone, which is just depicting the area of land that we currently haven't done work on yet to for any kind of land use zoning, is under the information only section of the legend. But it may be that we prefer to put in some different wording other than residential red zone. Well, I, I've, I've always... Or just when, excluded altogether. Yeah, well, when I've referred to it, I've always referred to it in quotation marks because it isn't a zone. No, that's correct. You know, well, we and, can do that. Um, it certainly doesn't have any... In, in this series of maps for the Phase 1 plans, it has absolutely no legal or planning status as such. It's for information only, but we somehow thought we should show in this first series of yeah. maps of Phase I, 1 just the geographic area of I it. understand why. Mm. Um, I worry about the implications of, you know, this, the potential status being given to it, especially with Supreme Court um, Because I, th case. I think that's the inference you'd take, actually, at first glance, if you looked at that. You would think it actually has official status now, alongside commercial, industrial, etc. Well, no, because it's information only. It has the official status or the um, planning status is well, because these are only the natural hazards overlays maps. It hasn't got all the other zones there. But potentially, we could either um, delete it altogether, or we could come up with a better, a different name for it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm happy also to put it in quotation marks. Or, or even have some wording underneath to say exactly what it is and, and to remind people that it has no planning status as such. Yeah, this has no planning status mm. um, with the quote marks around residential red zone. Mm. Okay. That might be the, the way to do it. We can do that. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that, that did come to my second point on the slides, so yep. we've covered that. Okay. This is just showing the previous map from the last um, workshop where we showed the 0.5 and the one metre sea level rise. If we quickly flip to the next slide. And that's what you've got in front of you. That's the one metre map. So that's just showing you the changes that, that have been put on. For the benefit of those listening in, the one metre and the half metre relates to the sea level rise. We haven't had any 
um, direction from government or whatever to adopt one metre yet, so why are we actually... Correct. Do we? Okay. Correct. I've got the right maps in front of me. I've... You don't have the one with 0.5 and 1, which you've got is the one, the new map, the amended map. So just in a practical sense, what, what does this mean? Were, were these... Practical sense? Um, Sorry, were these in our offices? The area covered by the flood management area. So, sorry, the these papers sorry, did were I get one of these? Out. Yes, you should have. Everything was couriered out. Actually, no, I missed the mayor's table. Oh, oh thank you. Beg your pardon. Have you got That's this? All right. Have you got this? Yeah, I've got that, but I... There's, a, there's just one map by itself. On yeah, but that's what I haven't got. got. One yes, I've got a one. Yeah. Sorry. No, 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 that's right. Yeah. Ah. Now I can see. The other two maps that you've got attached are just um, showing the extent of the uh, liquefaction maps in a bigger scale, because on the new planning maps, um, we've only printed out selected for the majority of the city. There's quite a few areas out to the west that we haven't shown in some of the Banks Peninsula. These maps are a selected number of maps, so we've given you a, a larger um, map of the liquefaction areas so that you can see the aerial extent of them. The other two maps are on the that you've got in your bundle. So sorry, sorry to be dense, but LAA one are they and LAA two? Liquefaction assessment area one yeah. and liquefaction assessment area yep. two. Yeah, I know I've got that. What's the difference? <laughs> oh, in terms of um, in terms of the rules in the plan, we're requiring more information on subdivision and resource consents if you're in liquefaction assessment area one, um, because that's the area where we think there's more likely to be damaging liquefaction. Liquefaction area two is a, an area where you might be able to have a lesser assessment, geotechnical assessment, because it's in that area where damaging liquefaction is unlikely. So, so more assessment required in area one. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, and the other revisions that we have, um, if you've gone to the next slide, because we have increased the, uh, increased, put, put the one metre sea level in the model, we also have to uh, amend the rules um, and put in the default minimum floor level at 12.3 instead of 11.8. And that was in I think, page 8 of your draft chapter. Um, it was picked up by one of the councillors at the last meeting that the 11.8 would now have to be increased to 12.3, and that's exactly correct. So on page 8 of the actual chapter, um, there's a red um, notation there showing that increase to 12.3 as the default minimum floor level. Page 8 or page 7? I've got it on page 8 of my copy. Um, it's the actual chapter five, natural hazards. In the permitted activity oh. table. Sorry, I've got the wrong. Sorry. Late in the piece, but datum. Oh, yes. The what's the sort of point where you me, where it's measured from? I understand it's um, minus nine metres below sea level. So you take it from minus nine up to 12.3, so it's effectively 3.3 metres. Is it so no longer it, the point under the cathedral? Is, is this it something a, to do with that? Is it? I, that's the bit I'm not sure of. Is it a, a set point that has yes, been Yes, it is a set point that you measure, measure all of the land yeah. to. Yeah. And it's yeah. Apparent, yeah. supposedly under the cathedral somewhere. 
Well, I thought it was below the cathedral. But. Well, unfortunately, we don't have our expert no, here to right. tell you, but we can give you that precise information. But it, it, like. the mind may, I think so it is a, a set good point idea. that has been measured as well. Yes, it is. Yeah. That's yes, the it main is. thing. Thank you. Mm. Sorry, I should have asked that last time. <laughs> and then the only other um, revisions that we had from the last meeting was that's in this chapter is some minor wording changes from as a result of comments from GNS, MB and Sarah and they're quite minor, they don't change the actual intent of anything that we had but we just tweak a few words for example the liquefaction definition, we switched around a couple of words so that it makes more sense so that localised flooding um, was at the end rather than in the middle of the definition so it was just very minor In terms of um, where to from here, um, there is some amendments to the land repair rule that would affect this chapter, and they're currently being progressed in a separate process. And the idea would be to include them before notification if they were all agreed and um, were ready to go. Otherwise, this chapter will have the operative city plan land repair rules instead of the updated ones. So just um, giving you a heads up on, on that. Um, and then MB um, that has also requested that through this chapter we use a more consistent terminology for, um, for the word geoprofessional when we've asked for various geotechnical reports to be prepared a particular way. Um, and we, are, we have got some amendments to that which we're just um, checking with some of the other um, scientists before we insert it in. But by and large, it doesn't make any real difference to the chapter. It just means that we've been more consistent with how we use the word geotechnical engineer, chartered professional engineer, and geoprofessional. Um, and I think that was just a very a sensible suggestion from MB to do that. That's another minor thing we're looking at. Um, last time, I thought one of the other things we asked for was um, that we would prohibit certain activities in some of the, the no-brain areas? Um, what we've got is um, Fiona's coming after me. Um, she's going to talk about the, um, quite extensively about the Port Hills and the work that we've done some extra work on that to show you. So um, we've switched the, cool. the order around that, that's coming. Okay. And then just in terms of the flood management stuff, like, is there any chance, given that we know houses are being lowered without consents and we've now seen the thing about asbestos, is there any chance that we could, we, we, we've been talking to the, the Minister or MB around doing like a fast track plan change just on the, like this issue, like all that, those issues? Because it just seems to me like people are rebuilding their houses now and they're using the old district plan and if they're lucky enough to have to get a consent, they might get raised a little bit. But if we've gone out with a metre, then obviously we want them higher. So... It just seems to me that this is the one thing that is completely critical to getting in, in place as soon as possible. Yeah, I'm happy to answer that. Uh, we, changes to the district plan can, um, can only take effect once the plan is operative. And what, one of the things that's happening with respect to houses and some rebuilds and repairs is that people are getting around the district plan provisions, if you like, by using existing use rights. Mm -hmm. And so we can't, we can't change that. We can't make those changes retrospective and, and make people do that. But what we have also done is we've got some, a stream of work going on looking at what can be done with respect to the Building Act and potential changes to the Building Act just for the repair and rebuild process. So that's in train, but that's separate to the district plan stuff. It's part of the flooding task force work. I don't know the answers to that. Because we're we're hoping as, to as, have yeah. a, an initial report in the, in the paper that's coming to the council next Thursday. Mm -hmm. 